as a society, we are obsessed with work. When we ask young children what they want to be when they're older, what we're asking is what they want to do for work. The same children are encouraged to work hard when they're at school and university so that in the future they can have a job and work hard. And then when people are of a working age, we ask them, what do you do? And the answer that they give will largely tell us actually what share of the Earth's resources they are able to access. And all of this time, so many of these people are simply looking forward to a weekend or retirement when they can actually stop working. I would argue that this model of work is entirely outdated and is incompatible with the values that we should be aspiring to in the 21st century. Sure, it worked in the past, where one individual could complete a task that would add value, and they could then trade the product of their labor. But this isn't the way the world works anymore. The first issue is that actually a lot of work may be unnecessary. This became apparent during the pandemic. Really small news story, you might have seen it. But during the pandemic, we defined some people as being key workers suggesting that perhaps some workers may not have been key. This shouldn't surprise us. In 2015, a YouGov poll suggested that 37% of UK workers believe that their job makes little or no meaningful difference to the world. That's a lot of people who don't think they're making a difference. Furthermore, we're in a position as a society where actually technology is improved. We can allow robots and computers to do a lot of the work that humans have historically had to do. Back in 1930, John Maynard Keynes suggested that by the 21st century, we would all be working a 15 hour work week. I can tell by looking around, 15-hour work days might now be more common. The issue seems to be that we could be working less if we wanted to, but increasingly jobs are about moving value rather than creating value. We are in some way creating tasks to do rather than tasks that need to be done. I don't want to pick on advertisers, in case there's any in the room. However, you need to consider whether advertising is actually creating value, or is it simply trying to move value from one industry or business to another? The second issue with work is to do with the link between money and work. Many people are simply working because they have to, in order to get the share of the Earth's resources that they would like. And if you don't believe that and you think, oh no, everyone is carrying out their calling or their vocation, the National Lottery reported in 2004 that in the first 10 years of lotteries, 87% of its winners were employed when they won, and only 27% of those carried on working afterwards. This strongly suggests that if people are able to stop working, the majority choose to do so. So if we put these two ideas together, we're in a really weird situation, where actually there's a lot of work that doesn't need to be done, and people are doing it despite not wanting to do it. There are potential structural solutions to this, some of which are put forward wonderfully by Rutger Bregman in his book Utopia for Realists. If you haven't read it, I'd strongly recommend. I'm not on commission, I promise. 
that he suggests that a universal basic income would be a good starting point in at least weakening the link between a person's job and their ability to afford the necessities of life. I would agree with him, but that's a discussion for another day. Another suggestion would be that the government could intervene more in the economy. I can see some of my economic students who don't like this idea right now. I'll convince you yet. But we could have the government intervening more and potentially rewarding those industries that are adding substantial value to society and potentially tax more heavily the industries that are not. Little bit controversial. These structural changes would be significant changes and ultimately things that will take time and political capital. So instead, I want to focus on one idea now that we can all introduce today, right here, right now. And this is the idea of ending the cult of work or the idea of workism, as it's been called by commentators, including Derek Thompson in The Atlantic. This is the idea that work has become a sort of religion, that we have chosen to put work at the center of our lives. And it's clear this is true. You can think about how working late is somehow seen as being noble or the survey of teenagers that suggested that 95% of teenagers believe that having a job that they enjoy in the future is what will make them a successful adult. This scored more highly than helping those in need or getting married. An oversimplistic statement, but we are seemingly prioritizing work over love and kindness. So how can we change this? I would suggest that one way we can change this is by describing ourselves and others not simply by our work, as by our leisure, our interests, our relationships with others. Instead of introducing myself as, I'm Sarah and I'm a teacher, what if I introduced myself by saying, my favorite ice cream flavor is mint choc chip. I support Peterborough United because someone has to. <laughs> Might be one other fan out there. Or even the fact I like to spend time with family and in my free time I enjoy quizzing. Does that not tell you more about a person than simply their career? When you meet someone, Ask about them, ask about their leisure time, not simply about what they do for work. Because if we are so obsessed with work the whole time, then we are running a significant risk of moving everything else out of the center. We need to think about what we're losing. If you think about the burnout and stress that people who are working long hours face, or the lack of self-worth that people experience if they don't have their dream job. And say, you know what, actually that's not what defines you. What defines you are other characteristics too. So I leave you with the idea, I'm Sarah, and I have just given a TED talk. Good night, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>